Hello, my name is Dr. Reed Tuxen, former Commissioner of Public Health for the District of Columbia and a member of the Steering Committee of the Black Coalition Against COVID. On behalf of all of my colleagues at the Black Coalition Against COVID, it is my pleasure to welcome you and thank you to viewing our first I Mask for DC virtual video festival. This fight against COVID requires all of us to be involved. It requires us to use our creativity and our talents to transmit life-saving information that people can hear, that people can understand, and that people can incorporate into their daily lives. So thanks for all who entered and brought their creativity to bear in this fight, and thank each one of you for taking the time to watch. Make no mistake, this is a tough fight, and it will be with us for a while. Now more than ever, we have to think about others. Many of us have someone who we care about, who could get very sick from COVID-19. Maybe it's an older grandmother or an obese friend or a mom with diabetes. Masking up and keeping distance and washing your hands is designed to keep them safe. It shows them that you care about their health. Remember, we have a ways to go and this ain't over. We hope you enjoy the festival. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our hostess for this virtual video festival, Dr. Melissa Clark. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much, Dr. Tuxen, for that introduction. I'm Dr. Melissa Clark. I am so privileged today to be the host for our first ever virtual video competition and festival, I Mask for DC. I'm also a proud member of the steering committee of the Black Coalition Against COVID-19. Our coalition's goal is to save lives during this pandemic. We're located in the nation's capital and have focused our activities there in order to highlight the precautions that every DC resident needs to take to protect themselves, their families, as well as their communities in this COVID-19 pandemic. So what better way to get that message out than to ask the community members themselves to put it in their own words? I Mask for DC put out a call to individuals to create videos that highlight the actions that we all need to take to stop the spread of COVID-19. We had 25 highly creative video submissions where the filmmakers made 30 second video messages using their cell phones to focus our attention on physical distancing, wearing masks, washing hands, as well as reminding us all that this ain't over. So we're now gonna take a look at our first of our six finalists. The first finalist is Reverend Norman Nixon. He is the president of the DC Mayor Youth, sorry, Mayor Youth Leadership Institute Alumni Association. He's also an associate minister at Union Temple Baptist Church in Ward 8. Reverend, you're up. Hi, I'm Norm Nixon. I wear many hats in the community. But this video isn't about the hat I wear. It's about the mask. The COVID-19 pandemic is not over and it can take your life. Even though the city is loosening restrictions, your mask and social distancing is your best weapon against catching COVID-19. Whenever you go outside, wear your mask. This ain't over. Thank you so much, Reverend Norman Nixon. I love those hats and those masks. So I wanted to let everyone know that the Black Coalition Against COVID worked with five community partners to bring you this I Mask for DC competition and festival. We're gonna hear from each of them today. Each of their videos will come between the video finalists. So our first partner is WHUR 96.3 FM in our nation's capital. Thanks to WHUR for your partnership because without it, we probably would not have been able to get the message out as effectively as we did to the community 
in order to get the, their participation for this I Mask for v DC video competition. So we're now going to hear from their general manager, Sean Plater. Hi, my name is Sean Plater, general manager at 96.3 WHUR, and we stand with the Black Coalition Against COVID. Testing for COVID-19 is now widely available. Check the website coronavirus.dc.gov backslash testing for DC testing locations. You can get a test if you have COVID-19 symptoms or if you've been exposed to someone who does. You do not need a doctor's note for any of the walk-in sites. The best timing for a test is five to eight days after being exposed. Remember, this is not over. Thank you, Sean, for that reminder about testing and where we can go to get testing. Our next finalist is Maya Gray. Maya is a graduate of Benjamin Banneker Academic High School. She's gonna be attending one of two universities in the fall, either University of Pennsylvania or University of Notre Dame. And whichever she chooses, she's gonna be majoring in architecture. In her spare time, she likes to visit amusement parks. She also likes to travel with family and friends and read books. Let's hear from Maya now. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic affecting the black community at an alarming rate, I wear a mask to protect myself, others, the elderly, and those with compromised immune systems. But I think it's even more important for the black community as a whole to be responsible, such as wearing a mask at all times while outside, washing our hands, and practicing social distancing. You can either buy a mask at your local CVS or you can make a mask, which is what I did. All you need is some arts and craft tools, a t-shirt, be safe, stay well, and happy mask making. Thanks so much, Maya. I love those props, the doll and the homemade mask. Now it's time to introduce our second partner. I am so pleased to introduce to you another I Mask for DC partner, the historic Washington and former newspaper, and they have a message for all of us. Greetings. I'm Denise Rolark Barnes, publisher of The Washington Informer. We stand with the Black Coalition Against COVID-19. We want you to remember that anyone can get coronavirus and pass it to others, even if they look and feel totally well. The best thing to do is to assume that others may have an infection. So wear your mask, and keep physically distant from those you do not live with. This is not over, so stay safe. Thank you to Denise Rolark Barnes and the Washington Informer for that timely message. So it's time for our third video finalist, and that would be Easy Street. Easy Street is a popular personality on WHUR-FM, and he's presently working with his nonprofit organization called Creative Solutions for Youth to organize the Stop the Violence Task Force Network in DC. Let's see Easy Street's video submission. What's up y'all? Easy Street from 96.3 WHUR. Really quick, uh, I wanna remind y'all, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, let them other people do what they do. Please continue to practice your uh, social distancing, keeping your hands clean and uh, staying inside and, and drinking your, uh, your, your tea and exercising and everything that you're supposed to do. Keep your mask on, all right? Because folks, it is not over. Let them other people do what they do. But as for this house, we got to take care of ourselves, y'all. Let's do it, all right? Keep your mask on. Huh? Huh? You like that? You like that? Peace. Thanks, Easy. We do like that. And thanks for all your years of playing wonderful music on DC Radio. It's time for our third partner. And I want to highlight the ARC Theater, who's been a great partner in this competition. Building bridges across the river brought many young people into the mix. And they really helped get our social message, our social messaging outreach working. Now we're going to hear from the ARC Theater. Hi, my name is Kimberly Douglas. I'm the director of the Art Theater, a program of building bridges across the river. We stand with the Black Coalition Against COVID-19. 
Many are continuing to protest for social justice. And if you're one of those people going out to protest, we know you want to keep your family safe. So please remember to take some water, your hand sanitizer, and of course your mask. This is not over and we know that masks save lives. You are so right, Kimberly. Wearing a mask does save lives. Thank you so much for the support of the ARC Theater. Our fourth video finalist, Crystal Liggins, is a certified Transcendental Meditation Instructor. She works at the Meditation Center at the ARC located in Ward 8. There, she teaches meditation to residents of Ward 7 and Ward 8 to deal with these stressful times. And here is Crystal's video. Wearing a mask during an epidemic is really important for keeping yourself safe and the people that you love. And when you go out in public, it helps to protect you and others. Making sure you stand six feet away when social distancing is really important. Thank you, Crystal, for that message. I love that intro music and such a creative location. Now, it's time to highlight our fourth partner. You know, media partners have been so essential in this endeavor. It's been important to get the word out as well as create buzz in the community. The Black Coalition Against COVID was very fortunate to have a second radio, comedio, radio community partner, and that's WPFW 89.3. Let's hear from Katia Stitt. Greetings, my name is Katia Stitt and I'm program director for WPFW, DC's Jazz and Justice Station. We stand with the Black Coalition Against COVID-19. DC is now in phase two of reopening, which means we can now go to churches, restaurants, and other businesses at limited capacity. But this does not mean the virus is gone. New cases are still being reported every day. Being around more people means we have to be more careful about wearing masks, keeping physically distant, and washing our hands. This is not over. This is absolutely not over, even though DC is reopening. Thanks so much, Katia, for that reminder. Our fifth video submission comes from Jaden Settles. Jaden lives in Ward 4 and will be attending Benjamin Banneker Academic High School. Jaden enjoys playing sports, mainly basketball, and engaging in all kinds of art and music activities. Jaden's video is up next. COVID-19 is a killer, and it's killing Black people at a higher rate. We make up 75% of COVID deaths in DC, but we can change that. COVID-19 is passed through droplets and suspended particles in the air. That's why wearing a mask is critical. Face masks combined with physical distancing would help reopen the economy more safely and crush a second or third COVID wave. Wear a mask for your family, friends, and you. Thank you so much, Jaden. Our uh, video submission that was done entirely with animation. Wonderful way to go. Now, our fifth partner to highlight and final partner is the Howard University Department of Theater Arts. They manage the judging of this competition, including the criteria for selecting winners. That criteria included relevance to the message about masking, clarity of the message, completeness of the video, including adhering to the 30 second time limit, the originality of the video, and the artistry of the video. So now we're gonna hear from our final partner, the Howard University Department of Theater Arts. Good afternoon. My name is Nefertiti Burton. I am professor and chair of Howard University's Department of Theater Arts. We stand with the Black Coalition Against COVID-19. We know that people who are over 60 or people with health conditions like diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, kidney, lung, or heart disease, 
and autoimmune diseases like lupus are at the highest risk of COVID-19. Three out of four of the deaths in DC have been African-Americans. We have to stay careful in our behaviors and vigilant around others. This is not over. Thanks, Professor Burton. That was a great reminder about who is at risk for COVID-19. And if you're not one of those at risk, you probably know somebody who does fit into one of those categories, and that's who you are wearing your mask for. So it's important to also realize that many elderly people might not have the typical symptoms that you hear about when getting COVID-19. The typical symptoms, of course, are fever, cough, or shortness of breath, but some elderly people might just appear more confused than usual, weaker than usual, or just stop eating. It's really important that if you notice that in a loved one who's elderly, that you immediately seek medical attention and, and insist on COVID testing for them. Once again, thank you, Professor Burton. So now we are going to have our sixth and last finalist in this competition. This video is from Ife Calhoun. Ife is a student and Ward 4 resident. During the recent stay-at-home order, she decided to become an entrepreneur and start making t-shirts, which she loves to do. Take it away, Ife. Why I mask? This summer, a global crisis emerged and changed the way we live forever. The reality is, the way we see the world, the way we connect, will forever be changed. We now live in a post-COVID society. I implore you to adjust because this isn't a phase, but a new way of life. I wear masks for those with autoimmune deficiencies, for the elderly and for the babies alike, for those with asthma and most importantly, myself. Black health matters. Black people are four times more likely to die from COVID. We have to take the necessary precautions. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. And please, take care of yourself. Why I mask. An Ife production. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ife. Thank you also for reminding us that Black health matters. Well, it is that time we have heard from all six of our video finalists. And it's really wonderful to see all the hard work that they put into that. But it's time to announce our winners. So thank you to everyone who submitted videos. Again, we had 25 submissions and each of them were wonderful. So know that if your video made it into the final six, you had some stiff competition. So from the six finalists that we've seen today, we are going to select a first, second, and third prize winner. But before announcing them, I wanna recognize and thank the three judges who devoted their time to creating the scoring system and reviewing each of those 25 videos. Our first judge, was Jani Rambaran, who's an international award-winning filmmaker and educator who's assistant professor of film and television at Howard University. Our second judge was Desne Wharton, uh, who is a theater, video, and film technician based here in DC. She's an alumnus of DC's own Duke Ellington School of the Arts, and also she attended the Pennsylvania State University. She's currently working as a freelance projection designer, and you can find her work at DesnePWharton.com. And third, Terrell Chavone, who's a storyteller, film writer, and director who's dedicated to highlighting authentic stories of women and people of color. She's worked as a film programmer for the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture, and she led the team for the 2018 inaugural Smithsonian African American Film Festival. Thank you so much to our three judges. So now comes the moment of truth. 
We have prizes that we're awarded, and they are generous because it was important to recognize how key this issue is that we are dealing with, the health of our communities. So what are the prizes? Our third prize winner will receive $250. Our second prize winner will walk away with $500. And our first prize winner will receive $1,500. So all the checks will be mailed to the contestant winners. So here are the winners now. Our third prize goes to the video that reminded us that black health matters, and that's Ife Calhoun. She had 173 points awarded by the judges, and Ife, as our third prize winner, will receive $250. Our second prize winner goes to the video that featured hats and masks. And that would be Reverend Norm Nixon, who got 186 points. Thank you, Reverend Nixon, and congratulations, you receive $500 as our second prize winner. And now for our first prize grand prize winner, that goes to our animation video, Jaden Settles. COVID-19 is a killer and it's killing black people at a higher rate. We make up 75% of COVID deaths in DC, but we can change that. COVID-19 is passed through droplets and suspended particles in the air. That's why wearing a mask is critical. Face masks combined with physical distancing would help reopen the economy more safely and crush a second or third COVID wave. Wear a mask for your family, friends, and you. Congratulations, Jaden. You artfully used animation to illustrate those important messages. And as our first prize winner, you receive $1,500. You were awarded 199 points by the judges. Congratulations. On behalf of the Black Coalition for COVID, there's several people I would like to thank. I first want to thank everybody who made video submissions. Thanks so much for your hard work, attention to detail, and dedication for getting the messages out to our community. And we definitely could not have had a successful event without our five partners, WHUR-FM, WPFW-FM, the Washington Informer, the ARC Theater, and the Howard University Department of Fine Arts. Thank you so much for your support and partnering with us in this important I Mask for DC festival and competition. And of course, I want to thank again our three fantastic judges who made excellent choices. Special kudos go to Black Coalition Against COVID-19 members, Adora Lee and Angela Owens Clark for their vision and efforts in making this festival and competition come to life. I also want to thank our intern, Melanie Coleman and our producer director, Mr. Wayne Bruce. Most importantly, I want to thank you, the audience, for tuning in and listening to us today. Once again, we have Jaden Settle's video to take us out. This is Dr. Melissa Clark for the Black Coalition Against COVID-19. Until we see you again, be wise, be well, be health empowered, and remember, this ain't over. COVID-19 is a killer, and it's killing Black people at a higher rate. We make up 75% of COVID deaths in DC, but we can change that. COVID-19 is passed through droplets and suspended particles in the air. That's why wearing a mask is critical. 
face mask combined with physical distancing would help reopen the economy more safely and crush a second or third COVID wave. Wear a mask for your family, friends, and you.